Hello and welcome to Prices at the Pumps exclusively on the Saltwire Network. Each week, we're pleased to be joined by Dan McTagg. Dan, you're back this week. Let me ask you off the hop. Here in the region, I know in Nova Scotia, the last week, week and a half, it's kind of been a roller coaster. The, in, uh, the interrupter clause has been used a couple of times for gas and then for diesel. Regular prices set on Friday. It's kind of been up and down. But what are you seeing across the region, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and Labrador and PEI, in terms of where prices have been going and where they might be headed? Well, you're right, Scott, a lot of volatility. And of course, that's reflected on the markets day in, day out. But if you had to do a line from, say, Christmas to now, uh, the line has been going up. And so the prices have had to reflect that. And we've seen a corresponding increase, an average of about between 11 and 18 cents a litre across much of Canada. Uh, for this week, Newfoundland, of course, tomorrow will be seeing about a four cent increase. Uh, it, uh, I'm looking at the diesel numbers, looks like it's going to be up 6.5 cents a litre. Uh, PEI will likely follow, of course, along with Nova Scotia and now New Brunswick, which now does these things on Friday. A uh, little subtle change, but makes my job and our job here at uh, Saltwire Network a little easier. My overall impression is that this is the kind of choppy information that we're going to continue to see for much of the month of February. I know we're already talking uh, another month is behind us. I'm not expecting this fur to fly or sparks to, uh, to start to scintillate until we see the uh, uh, until we see March numbers and we see refineries closing down the United States or at least going through maintenance uh, for a period of time as they prepare for the springtime inventory. What it does mean is that overall, we may get a few days of grace where prices drop a little bit, but generally speaking, we're going to continue to see upward pressure on prices at the very least on gasoline, uh, going up maybe three cents a liter here in Nova Scotia on Friday. Uh, same for PEI and of course, New Brunswick. Uh, but uh, look for them to re remain there at these higher than we expected uh, numbers we saw in November and December. Diesel will continue to push upwards, although the interrupter clause has been used for diesel here in Nova Scotia. It hasn't been in other provinces where, as I mentioned earlier, up six and a half cents a litre. Uh, but here in the province where there has been an increase of a few cents, look for about a 1.5 cent increase in diesel prices. Uh, same for stove and heating oil and propane. All are going to indicate a little bit higher. By the way, we've had a major break with warmer than expected weather so far this winter, uh, but I don't think winter's done with us. And for that reason, watch the uh, diesel inventories because I think that's the one that will be the benchmark and really the trendsetter, the pace setter, if you will, uh, for gasoline and other fuels that uh, we'll be consuming over the next several months. Yeah, no question uh, that we haven't really had a big winter wallop yet for the most part here in Nova Scotia. I know depending on where you are regionally, maybe you've had more snow, but I'm based out of Truro right now, and I think I've shoveled twice yeah. uh, since what I consider the winter season back starting in November. But let's move on to uh, another topic, which is how much does the U.S. kind of dictate or influence what happens in Canada? I ask you that because if I go to Google, for example, and I just do a, a general search for oil yes. news, the majority of the articles that pop up are all to do with what's happening in the U.S., so how much is Canada affected or influenced by what we see happening in the U.S.? We're joined at the hip. The United States determines the price. We may have the supply, as do they. But uh, when it comes to uh, price discovery, it's all the U.S. market. For us in eastern Canada, uh, it's the New York Harbor, the New York spot price for gasoline, diesel, and other fuels, aviation, etc., for Western Canada, it's the Chicago uh, CME uh, market. Uh, and of course, for the lower mainland of BC, it's the Pacific Northwest market. And so those are the the markets that uh, suggest for us, because the United States consumes about eight times more fuel than Canadians do, um, you know, we have to ensure that uh, our supplies are uh, re responsibly uh, priced in a way at the wholesale level that reflects market fundamentals, including, of course, the value of the Canadian dollar, which as it weakens means the price actually goes up if nothing else changes. So, yes, the United States is important. It matters not just obviously for the world, but we're just north of the border. And you can imagine a scenario where if we tried a made at home price, which was, say, cheaper by 10 or 15 cents a litre, with our free trade agreements that, we, uh, that we're obliged to, it wouldn't stop Americans from coming north of the border, buying up all our supplies. So there has to be a bit of a preemptive move uh, in terms of ensuring prices are at or above uh, American prices. I know that might rub people the wrong way, but uh, you know the reality is X tax, you're paying pretty much the same thing Americans do in those relevant markets. 
And to kind of keep that theme going about, you know, doing a search and seeing the stories that come up. When I did do a search earlier today, a lot of the articles that popped up were from about 12 to 18 hours ago. But a lot of the headlines were oil inventories rising, oil market pressures downward on price because of these inventories. Maybe just wade through all of that and, and tell us what that means for the consumer. Well, on Tuesday, uh, we often get the American Petroleum Institute, which gives its view as to where the inventory report will happen the next day, which is today, Wednesday. And that inventory report isn't exactly going to be 100% of what the API says, the American Petroleum Institute. Uh, yesterday, for instance, uh, markets fell on uh, the belief that, uh, you know, there would be a bit of a drag, economic drag globally and in the United States, and that uh, the retail market isn't as strong a function really of the U.S. Fed and other central banks raising interest rates to curb economic activity, as it were, to tamp down inflation by pushing, uh, you know, economic activity down. That aside, the most interesting part was that uh, the API predicted about a three million uh, barrel build in U.S. oil inventories. It turns out it was only half a billion, half a million barrels. And so for that reason, we're starting to see oil rally a little bit today, WTI in particular, up about a half a dollar a barrel. Uh, for gasoline, no surprise there. Uh, you know, we did get the wall up in the United States. They had uh, two weeks of very, very bad and cold weather. That really limited demand for product, for diesel, for gasoline products and diesel as well. But there, as I mentioned earlier, we're seeing from this morning's um, energy inventory report, the weekly petroleum report, which is something everyone can see at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, um, that uh, diesel inventories continue to be below the average. And it's for that reason that even though we haven't had cold weather, we better not because those prices are going to go much higher uh, as we as we go forward. But again, the, what happens in the United States, the market there, fundamentals change day by day. On Monday, Scott, we saw a rally in markets based on COVID lockdowns ending in China. The immediate day later, so we had a three cent increase. The immediate day later, they fell by the equivalent of three cents a liter. So a bit of a wash. We'll have to see what happens today. But that's why I'm saying that Friday here in Nova Scotia, we're looking at maybe no more than about a three cent increase. Uh, same for New Brunswick and, of course, PEI. And you used a, a really valid term a little while ago when you said volatility. And we talk every week and we've seen the volatility in the markets. And sometimes it can be almost like trying to read tea leaves as to where it's going. That's why it's great to have you here every week to kind of wade through all of the news and noise that's out there. But as we wrap up, just let me ask you this again. As we look short term, as you look ahead at the next week or two weeks, with everything that's going on, where are you seeing prices go for gas, diesel, home heating, fuel, etc.? Gasoline, maybe no more than two or three cents a liter over the next four weeks. So between now and say the end of February. That means it could go down three cents and back up six cents, but not much in the way of any major increase. Diesel, I'm looking for a breakout, maybe 10 cents a liter by the end of February. Again, much as is weather contingent. Uh, same for natural gas and propane, the equivalent increase of about three to four percent um, between now and the end of that uh, that month. So that's where I see things short term. Uh, there's a lot of uh, slip between the cup and the lip, as they say. Uh, a lot can happen between now and then, but generally the fundamentals are starting to break through energy traders, not those involved directly with trades, but the financial traders, hedge funds, money managers, those who are sort of taking positions outside of the, you know, the market, they're going to have to start to uh, pay more attention to supply and demand because on the supply side, uh, we have a bit of a problem where it's going to get worse as we head towards higher demand season come the spring. Well, you know, we do appreciate being able to speak with you every week, again, just to kind of wade through all of the no noise that's out there and kind of break it all down. Before we let you go, Dan, it's great having you here with us on the Saltwire Network on Prices at the Pumps, but you're not with us 24-7, so where else can folks find you when you're not with us? Yeah, gaswizard.ca is where I post prices. I usually try to give an estimate of where we're going to be in a couple of days from now. And of course, the policy behind those gas and in inflated energy prices and the causes from the drop or rise uh, can also be found at affordableenergy.ca and president of Canadians for Affordable Energy. So two hats, one a functional one, and the other one more of a policy one. Well, Dan, I know that you're having a bit of a nor'easter up where you are in Ontario today, yes, so uh, be safe. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, maybe get that shovel out once and for all and uh, watch those prices next week. Thanks, Scott. Great to be here at Solar Network. Yeah, great to have you with us as always, Dan. Thanks. Be well. We'll talk to you next week. We'll see you.